The world's poorest countries are in more debt than ever in history. Six in ten are facing debt distress. Countries are having to choose between paying creditors and feeding people. How did we get here? And what do food systems have to do with it? The last major debt crisis struck in the 1980s. A global recession left low-income countries in debt. So when rich countries put up interest rates to curb inflation, many were unable to repay their loans. Developing countries were forced to turn to the International Monetary Fund and World Bank for help. In exchange for bailing them out, these organizations required countries to cut social programs and liberalize their economies. They were encouraged to produce crops for export, like cotton and coffee, to earn foreign exchange and pay down their debts. But this marginalized small-scale farmers left countries reliant on imports to meet domestic food needs and undermined food security. By the early 2000s, developing countries were benefiting from debt relief and renewed efforts to fight poverty. But underneath, their food systems were increasingly exposed to volatile global markets and climate shocks. So following a global financial crisis and prolonged recession, hunger and debt levels began to rise again. Since 2020, the world has been hit by a pandemic, a major recession, and a severe food price crisis sparked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Rich countries have put up interest rates again, raising the cost of loan repayments. Now poorer countries are left facing a triple blow of skyrocketing food import bills, spiraling debt servicing costs, and intensifying climate impacts. We're back to the 1980s, only worse. This time around, how do we break the cycle of debt and hunger? We need comprehensive debt relief now. But we also need to invest in building food systems that are less reliant on imports and more resilient to climate shocks, that sustain the livelihoods of farmers and feed communities. That way, poorer countries can finally get off the debt treadmill.